Exploring different genres of music could possibly be my favorite activity in the world. I truly began exploring for the first time towards the end of my middle school years, allowing myself to embrace new and often foreign styles of music. It was then my ear was practically open to anything, from friends putting me on to different styles of hip-hop I wasn't privy to, and other friends putting me on to a number of subgenres in rock, including post-hardcore, metal, and things of that nature. And much to my surprise, I fell in love with a number of these bands, and the sound in general. As I grew up, I was still exploring, and found that I had a greater love for punk and indie rock over the years. But it wasn't until this year that I became really good friends with a dedicated metalhead, and rediscovered my love for all things hardcore, metal, etc. Going to a few shows this year, getting in the pit each time, and my friend periodically sending me some of his favorite bands, reminded me how much I truly loved and appreciated the genre. All this to say that my friend, who might I add I've known for a very short amount of time, is really, really good at identifying things that I could potentially really love. I let it be known that coming of age slash drama is my favorite genre of movie, and boom, he shows me two of my favorites in the genre this year. I let it be known that punk and indie rock slash pop are two of my favorite genres in music. And he then proceeds to show me a perfect bridge of the two. Earlier that day, we became aware of an upcoming show in Atlanta that featured one of my favorite indie rock acts of the last few years in Snail Mail, the incredibly unique Tizo Touchdown, and last but certainly not least, Turnstile. Though I was familiar with the group by name, I had never listened to their music. And that night, he introduced me to their newest record and now one of my most replayed albums of the year, Glow On. As I mentioned before, I've heard of the band by name, but never their music. And my introduction to the band was their new music getting a fairly mixed reception. As most of the hardcore community or day one fans embrace how much their sound had evolved, and others were worried that they had lost their hardcore identity that made Turnstile, Turnstile. I as a new fan can dispute neither of those claims off the strength of it not being my place to do so. But perhaps the perspective of a new fan who genuinely loves both spectrums of hardcore and indie pop music for lack of better terms could open the eyes and ears of those who can't get into it. Pitchfork phrased it beautifully in their review saying it's not a crossover hardcore album that looks to transcend the genre but one that tries to elevate it to its highest visibility. And it would be extremely hard to say that Turnstile didn't do just that. In a very short amount of time, I was on board with all of the sounds across this record. And in reading the lyrics, something I typically don't do with hardcore albums, provided a lot of layers that I didn't expect to unravel. Layers that when peeled back made this one of my favorite album listening experiences in a good bit. And to give a glimpse into what this listening experience felt like, we're gonna break down these four songs. Mystery, Blackout, Underwater Boy, and TLC. Starting with a dreamlike synth pattern that I personally could only explain as the start of a journey. A journey through the things that make life feel empty, confusing, and ultimately scary. But in interesting fashion, a lot of what's being talked about on this entire album offers some catharsis. Taking these uneasy, repressed feelings and screaming them out loud, creating comfort. This journey was much needed as most of these fears are completely relatable, especially on the opening track, Mystery. The incredibly energetic mystery starts with an interesting set of lines that proclaim living life is better than death, but following it up closely with being afraid to do just that, live life. The fear of both living and dying is a fear I didn't know I needed to hear be articulated. I often personally think about both as the world has presented some of the scariest obstacles and death may seem like the easier and better option, but getting over the fear that is living is growth, and that's what makes this one of my favorite songs on the album and possibly the most therapeutic.
One of my favorite elements about Turnstile's lyrics is the straightforward approach they take. Nothing is incredibly hidden. The point that they want to get across, they articulate it as fast and as honest as they possibly can. Here talking about the universal fear of running out of time. These existentialist themes of fighting for something that doesn't always feel worth fighting for is a dark tone that generally lasts the entire album, but they aren't stated for a pity party. It's just true emotions that many of us feel, including Brendan. And when hearing these feelings get expressed, we feel seen and no longer alone. Something Brendan talks about exclusively in the chorus of our next song. Blackout is one of the many tracks on Glow On that mixes a lot of genres. Mixing this new lighter and groovy sound they've grown to like on this record, while staying true to the hardcore sound that got them there in the first place. The energetic and crunchy guitar riff builds to the first verse that includes Brendan talking about the inevitability of the end, and how if that's the case, the spotlight might as well shine again. As I brought up moments ago, the chorus of Blackout is the most intriguing portion for me personally, as Brendan breaks a lyrical fourth wall talking directly to the listener. dark and or pessimistic nature of Turnstile's lyrics have in most cases been the saving grace for most of their listeners. And the chorus sheds light on that, proclaiming that if it's what helps the many people that have changed their lives as artists, they're happy to provide and will continue to do so. I'd be remiss in not mentioning how the incredible mixing and performance of Turnstile adds to the entirety of this record. Like I've mentioned before, this album starkly contrasts their previous records. But while showcasing the evolution of their sound, they manage to still keep the grit that makes them hardcore legends, specifically with one of my favorite breakdowns on this record. and a complete switch from the track Don't Play, and any Turnstile song ever for that matter. The band opens up the track with more dreamlike guitar writing that eventually builds into a light groovy shuffle. The song borrows a sound that I'm personally more accustomed to hear from one of my favorite indie groups, so the unlisted feature from the talented Julian Baker is far from out of place. Themes of existentialism continue in the lyrics as the vocalists sing. In an interview with thepitchkc.com, Julian talked about how the song came to be saying it seemed like he was going through a period of learning, self-discovery, and self-seeing, but this could have been written about something that happened a long time ago. I didn't really prod him for personal information, I just listened to the poetic premise of the song as he described it. She went on to compliment the aspect of Turnstile that really made me fall in love with them, saying she admired their ability to say a lot in a really plain way that didn't sound vague. It's just concise. With a track time of 3 minutes and 4 seconds, Underwater Boy has no choice but to be concise with its message. A message of purpose for the youth. Much like Mystery discussing that life is a beautiful thing and should be treated as such, the journey can leave you withered and asking for solutions at each turn, but will teach you and nourish the soul. The record in my opinion discusses the dark parts of growth and life in general, and empowering those listening to finish out their journey as the results will most likely satisfy. To ensure satisfaction, you have to take care of yourself. Taking time every now and then 
to give yourself a little TLC. This song is a huge demand for realness, something that feels incredibly scarce in the wild world we live in. Real love, real connection, things that when they're 100% genuine outright all of the fickle things that have been placed on such a high pedestal in our lives. Wanting all of these things, of course, requires trust for others, something that ultimately for one's own protection comes at a premium. But the feeling I get is that goodwill on your part will in return give you people that you can trust, you can love and feel something real. Something I'm sure Turnstiles members genuinely feel for one another as they've been on this incredible journey as a group for 12 years now. Glow On has taken Turnstiles career to a new level of popular as they get set to go on tour of Blink-182 and possibly win a handful of Grammys in February. But beyond the accolades and celebrity, they released an album that simply just wants people to stay strong take care of themselves and one another it wants you to remember that the bad times weren't wasted time it was lessons being learned along the way for the next obstacle and to just have fucking fun you only have one life and there's no use in wasting it a lesson i gladly learned in the pit at my first turnstile show a couple weeks ago but something ian cohen stated in his review of glow on that remains true is seeing turnstile live is no longer a prerequisite to get glow on being alive will suffice.